Good morning everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Lego Legend of Zelda Custom Set Showcase Wave 2 and this is week 4 where today we'll be taking a look at Z0015 with 388 pieces Monk Mass Kosher's Final Battle and boy am I excited to share this one with you this is one of the favourite ones I've done more recently uh, so let's take a closer look so as previously mentioned, this is set number Z0015, Monk Maz Kosher's final trial, ages 8 plus with 388 pieces, retailing for about £30 with two minifigures and then one extra brick built character, as well as a vehicle. Hmm. We'll save that one for later. But you can see here on the left that the box is set on that final jewel island, the fifth divine beast as some would call it, in Maz, Maz Kosher's fifth in Maz Kosher's third phase where he is a giant and unlike the most commonly seen aspect where he flies around this is based off that standing phase and that is more because I spent a lot of that time in that phase when I did the fight um, but that's beside the point you can see that the box size is the 30 pound box size rotated on its side so it is a more vertical look and besides that let's get into the description so this reads Overcome the final trial of Monk Man's Kosher and claim the Master Cycle Zero. Watch out for the flying spike balls and bring the giant back down to size. With full posability, Monk Man's Kosher measures over 20 centimeters tall, containing two minifigures and a Master Cycle Zero bike, two spike balls, and a giant Maz Kosher minifigure. Enjoy building a whole encounter of an experience in one box. So here is the entire contents of the set. When we open the box, we see that there are three numbered bags inside and one instruction manual. Looking inside the instruction manual, which is the more vertical style, we can see that we have bag one containing the climber's armor link, as well as the torso of the monk. Bag two contains the legs and arms, as well as the second minifigure, the normal sized monk. And bag three finishes off the monk's head, as well as building the master cycle zero and the very simple spike ball builds. So, taking a look at the set, we can see here that we have Monk as well as his two weapons, these spike balls. These cannot actually attach to his hand, but can be thrown around. They are, I believe, some bionicle pieces attached together with a Technic pin in the middle. And you can see here that the Monk himself is using the giant minifigure format, first pioneered by Giant Man in the Ant-Man sets, then pre also used in uh, Ninjago as well as... The Ares in DC Superheroes, and this is another account of that here. Now this one has actually had some slight modifications from those original designs. He is slightly bigger than those guys, as uh, well as he's using a completely different technique for his arms and legs, although obviously similarly based off them, but making these as some more modern pieces allowed me to upscale it and make him look a bit more proportional to a minifigure. And I really love the build, especially that print on the 6x6 white tile. Taking a look at some of that posability, on the right you can see that his arms have a lot of degree of motion, as well as in particular his hair on his shoulders, which can be adjusted so that his arms can be moved more, or also so that his hair has that weird floating aspect that we'll take a look at later. Uh, you can also see that his legs can move in the exact same articulation as a minifigure, all the way to sitting down and slightly back past uh, straight upright as well. Now I haven't actually tested it, but I'm pretty confident in his balancing ability. Uh, but that's besides the point anyway. You can also see some of the details I put on him. He's got those golden bangles around his arms and his legs. He's wearing his shorts as well as you can see he has some chest definition from how he's withered away as a dead monk um, with those ingot pieces to represent the rib cage as well as his medallion hanging across his chest. Uh -huh. Yeah. He's also wearing his giant hat, and that is a new piece, well, not a new piece, but a new colour in that tan dish. The red 6x6, however, does exist. You can also see that he has studs on the bottom of his feet, meaning that if you were having problems with posability, he could attach to studs like any normal minifigure could. Here is him up close, where he is telekinesising that ball to go and fly at Link on the bike. Now, I know that is a bit of a cannon break to have Link on the Master Cycle Zero in this fight, but uh, you've got to understand that if LEGO makes other sets, they're going to break the cannon all the time if it makes playability better. And here is the bike uh, roughly to scale. I think it should be possibly a bit bigger there, but you can see our Link model sat on the Master Cycle Zero covering for a motorcycle piece. And obviously this is a giant minifigure, so he is going to dwarf it with the Link on the motorcycle, probably coming up to just below the hip. 
And here is our first minifigure, the Link in Climbers set. And this is an armor set from Breath of the Wild. And you can see here that it's transformed quite well into minifigure form. He's using the old pirate bandana piece in dark red to represent the climbing bandana, as well as having a nice simplistic print on his torso. No jewel molded arms, but it's definitely got some printing on there. A bit of a concerned expression. And on the hip piece, we have some nice belt printing as well as a bit of skin showing through as the climber said isn't exactly the most baggy clothing, as well as those green shorts with their printing as well and some toe printing down the bottom, which you can't see. You can also see he's wearing the harnesses and a change from previous waves is that the eyes are now going more minifigure like minifigures don't have bug eyes anymore like the clone wars eyes so this guy is now more in line using no such uh, bug eyes which is a inconsistency across this wave he is based off the reference material just for one final look and as with all minifigures some details have had to be cut for size but not as many as you'd like i suppose technically there should be hair coming out from under the bandana but it'd be very extremely rare that we'd either get printing on that or a specialist mold for this figure Second minifigure to look at today is the minifigure version of Monk Mads Kosher, or I suppose you could view this as one of the Monk clones which come out and fight. And you can see here that he's wearing those shorts, just like the big version. You've got the negative space where he is withered away and very thin, so even though he is not a female, he is using the female body shape there. You can see the medallion and the bands around his arms, as well as this new molded hair hat combo with the hair down the sides and the hat. In particular, the face print or that cloth that covers his face is actually printed onto the face, and that is so that I can get some more use out of this hairpiece at a future date, which trust me, I very much do plan to do. And you can see that compared to his uh, real version, it's fairly similar. I mean, the air arms can't really cross like he does, like with his feet. And this minifigure would probably come with power blast as an accessory, as a, an added play feature, but also to represent that blue energy when he does his attacks. Third up to take a look at, we have the minifigure drawn version of the giant Mascosha, and you can see that he looks basically the same as his in real life counterpart, mainly thanks to that print existing on the studio model. Uh, but you can see the exact same details, and he is absolutely giant, but that's something I do here in this custom set showcase. I like to draw all of my brick built characters. Anything that's sentient should get a drawing, and that is just to bring them all in line so when we look at all the figs together at the end of the wave, they all look consistent. And here's that phase that I was referencing where he stands up and he makes the balls appear and he throws them at you. And I just thought this was way more menacing and way more uh, suitable for a Lego set, in my opinion. Finally, to take a look at, we have the Master Cycle Zero, and for those of you that don't know how the LEGO motorcycles work, it's fairly self-explanatory, really. We have this set motorcycle frame with the wheels and tyres that clip into it, and then you can clip these body pieces onto the top, and this is a specially designed body piece for the Master Cycle Zero, with a hole in the neck for the handlebars to stick through. It is in the gunmetal grey collar with a lot of specialist printing, and that horn on the front would probably have to be rubber to avoid it snapping off, but you can see that Link just sits down on the middle and this is the molded version of the master cycle zero that i mentioned in the advent calendar saying i wanted to do a proper minifigure scale one instead of that micro build and there is your reference material for you as well obviously some details have to be cut but i think it's a very nice legoized version so before we close up for today let's quickly go and take a look at the monk in studio so here in studio we can see the monk in all his glory still throwing his orbs around and in particular with this uh, shot I wanted to show you the back as well as some articulation I didn't mention earlier. So you can see here that the reason that this guy can actually stand up is because the back of his body doesn't allow his legs to uh, tilt any further back meaning that as long as he's slightly back heavy, which he is because of his hair, he should be absolutely fine standing up. Although, just like Giant Man, I'm sure it's not a perfect uh, stability. We can also see from the back here that he has some fairly uh, detailed amount of hair going into those wisps, just like in those pictures I showed you earlier. In particular, if you wanted, you could turn the hinges up on all of these guys here, and that would allow you to kind of make them look like they're floating, although I prefer them looking down on the back like this. Of course, if you did tilt those up, that would give you the room to articulate the head, which can actually rotate. 
you can see in here that we have some corner tiles and there is a Technic axle going through the middle of the head which allows him to rotate if obviously you lift up all these little bits of hair so that you can sort of give him some free motion. You can also see that he is a giant snot build because all these studs are facing his back, uh, meaning that you build him on his side like this and then from there you sort of uh, turn it around and make him displayable. You can also see how I did the sides, which is the improvement I was talking about based off the previous uh, giant minifigure models, making use of uh, hinge clips to create an actual wedge plate shape when I couldn't just use the wedge bricks. You can also see how the chain is made as well as how this 6x6 tile is just attached to the front of the face. But that's about all extra you can glean from this model in studio. So let's go and wrap back up. So that's going to do it for the Monk Mazkosha's final trial set in our custom set showcase. And I'm really, really proud of this one. I think this is such a great concept. And it's one that actually just reminds me of a Lego £30 playset. And I'm really, really pleased with how it showed out. Box set box art and all. It's really great to include the Master Cycle Zero as well as some different minifigures and I really do love that buildable figure. He's definitely one I want to try in real life when those dark tan parts become available in the white colour. Now that just leaves next week and we'll be going into our fifth custom set on the showcase and I think this one's a bit obvious but this is Z0019 with 882 pieces and you'll see that next Friday. But in the meantime, leave your speculations for that down in the comments below, as well as let me know what you thought of the giant buildable Maz Kosha. And if you guys have any ideas for future custom sets, please leave them there too. And I promise that they will get made at some point. My backlog is pretty big. I'll be starting to construct Wave 3 sets soon to try and stay ahead. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll see you next week. Goodbye.